Cynthia Neville. Thank you all for joining me on Cowgirls and Crowdfunding today, brought by ThinkCrowdfund.com. This episode one is sponsored by Wells Fargo Bank, as well as Comerica, ListFund, and ThinkCrowdfund.com. Super excited to finally launch our very first episode. Uh, this four-part series is designed to help small businesses and mid-sized businesses understand equity crowdfunding, but also understand how to raise capital in today's market. I have some super guests today, some experts, some national experts who have joined me today. But first and foremost, I want to remind you that if you're ever looking for r and and crowdfunding education, uh, we have three town halls that are hosted in Texas, and that's what happens next month in July in uh, Austin, Texas. Um, they're called the Equity Crowdfunding Town Hall. So we have a lot to share with you today. Again, I'm super thrilled to bring this show to you, uh, sponsored by Comerica and Wells Fargo Bank. Today's show is on equity markets. We're actually uh, talking about how we can help women-owned businesses, um, especially small businesses, understand the new jobs act, the private equity uh, market, as well as selling securities online. My two special guests are Lisa Lowe. She's the Vice President of Sales with We Stock Transfer. And I also have Joan Drummond from ComputerShare joining me today. Thank you, ladies. Hey, welcome. You also have Shira Hai, the Director of Client Services here at VStock Transfer. Hi, everyone. How are you? Hi, Shira. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Lisa, let's start with you. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. You have an a, a awesome background, and you're a lady who knows what she's doing when it comes to security. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Lisa? Oh, you were asking me. I'm sorry. Joan, Joan popped up over there, so I apologize. Uh, thank you for uh, welcoming us to uh, your show. Um, my name is Lisa Lowe again. I'm Vice President of Sales here at VStock Transfer. And I've uh, been with the company since inception, uh, five years now, a little bit over five years. And my background is uh, outside sales business and uh, I was always looking for an opportunity to be able to expand upon my career as a woman in business and finance. And five years ago, I found the right fit with VStock Transfer. Fantastic. Cher, tell us a little bit about yourself as well. Thank you. I'm the Director of Client Services here at VStock. And essentially, I have a dual function role. I'm here to help the company in whatever their needs may be, structuring their cap table, making sure all the data is correct, helping them with issuing new stock, as well as helping the shareholders, whatever their needs are, being receptive to both the company and the shareholder to make things, make sure things run very smoothly and provide them the best customer service care. This is fantastic. So we're going to get into more conversation and explaining what a cap table is and <laughs> for some yeah. of our uh, visitors or um, uh, viewers who may not understand. So we'll come back. So thanks for sharing that information with us here. Joan, tell us a little bit about your background. You have a little bit of IT background, um, but now you're involved in private markets. How did that come about? <laughs> well, I've been with ComputerShare for quite a while. Um, it's been 18 years now, I think. Um, but before ComputerShare, actually I like to refer to it as BC, before children and before ComputerShare, mm -hmm. I raised private equity and worked in venture capital for a number of years. and um, then after being at home with kids for a little bit, I, kind of went, I had a consulting firm and ended up coming back into the workforce through computer share, and I've done a variety of things here. Um, started out in call center and client management, and then pretty quickly moved into the e-commerce world. We did a lot in uh, the predecessor company here, Equiserve. We did a lot of e-commerce work, and developed a lot of um, online services, which at, which at the time were pretty cutting edge. And then I kind of segued from that to product management. And then when ComputerShare bought us about 10 years ago, 
they didn't quite know what to do with us product management people because they didn't really have that function so they put us in the IT department and I spent about eight years there doing some very interesting stuff but then when they were starting up the private markets group with computer share it seemed like a really good fit so I moved over here and have been having a lot of fun with it because we're kind of a startup within the company so we have a small group of people that specialize in private private companies and we've been doing a lot on the crowdfunding and uh, private capital raising front. Yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. I was very interested when you and I met in, um, was it New York? No, D.C. We met in D.C. and you were sharing with me um, what you all are doing in this space. So I definitely want to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, thanks so much. So let's talk about each of you all's companies real quick. I really want to uh, explain to the, the viewers exactly what you do and as it relates to um, crowdfunding. Um, so Lisa, if you would start, explain to us exactly what Thought Transfer does for companies who are looking to or raising capital online. Well, as far as, um, it's a great question, as far as the capital online, as a transfer agent, we don't deal with the actual capital raise, but as a transfer agent, which is required in the new equity crowdfunding rules, you know, it, any, any public public company or private company that's utilizing these new regulations require a transfer agent. So we assist the issuer and the shareholders with their certificates, their issuances, their cap table, and anything and everything that the private or public company utilizes in their back office for interfacing with their shareholders. And Shear can expand on that as far as the director of the client services. Yeah, so to, to kind of break it down for everyone, essentially a company is looking to raise capital, um, they're going through the crowdfunding avenue, and you're dealing with thousands and thousands of people going out there and, and buying a part of that company. And what we do is essentially take the shareholders and deal with that whole customer service relationship with the shareholders, helping them, whatever their issues are, and really take the burden off the company. So the shareholders are calling the us, the VStock transfer, and we're saying, okay, here's you want to do this with your shares, you would like to transfer your shares, let's help you facilitate that. You would like your to send your shares to a broker if that is what you want to do. We help facilitate that. So essentially we take all that customer service, dealing with the shareholders, off the the shoulders of the company and bring it on our shoulders and guide them along the process. And, and in addition, um, Cynthia, one of the things that you know we learned, um, we're the transfer agent for the first reggae that went live, uh, Elio Motors. So one of the things that it was a test run and many people didn't know what to expect because it was the first reggae that went on the OTC markets and there were a lot of challenges for those shareholders because many of these shareholders as as Joan and everyone else in this market can tell you are unsophisticated they they don't know which broker to use so as a transfer agent our team of 30 plus and I like to say that we're world class over here um, have been able to guide those shareholders with patience and knowledge and, and educate them a little bit more effectively on what they need to do with those certificates and, and guide them through that process so that they're much more comfortable and they're not calling the issuer as Shear said. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a nice process and we feel those calls and, and um, it's definitely been a learning curve for everybody involved with this, with this company. So I want to step back and explain that OTC are over the computer and issuer is going to be a small business owner or a business owner who is actually raising money, uh, selling shares over the internet using some type of approved uh, crowdfunding portal. Uh, those who are selling the shares are called issuers and then the buyers are called shareholders cool. or investors. All right, very good. Joan, tell us a little bit about computer share. What exactly are you guys doing in this equity crowdfunding space? Well, as Lisa and Cher were saying, we do get a lot of um, people who are unsophisticated in this space and it's not just the shareholders a lot of times it's the issuers because they're focused on their core business they're trying to start up or really jump start or effectively grow a business that is probably unrelated to shareholder record keeping mm -hmm. so for someone like computer share or vstock you know this is our core business this is what we're good at we keep records and we keep 
good and accurate records, and that's really a big help to companies. It's, it's actually a perfect candidate for outsourcing because, I mean, one of the things that I like to say to people is, if you're in this the business anyway, you're usually dealing with the founder or the CEO or maybe the CFO if they're big enough to have one. And those are people that have a lot of important functions within the company, and they've undoubtedly probably participated in the capital raising. Maybe they've raised capital personally from people that they know, friends and family. So this is a very important piece of their company. It's, it's really capital is the lifeblood of companies. And this is proprietary and confidential information. So it's important, but it's not a core function. It's not necessarily an immediate pressing need on a daily basis. But it's also not something that you hand over to the shipping clerk because of the nature of the information. So it's very important to safeguard the accuracy and the privacy of the information. And a lot of times what happens, and I think probably Lisa and Cher have experienced something like this. When you bring in a company's records, with all good intention, maybe they've been keeping it on a spreadsheet, maybe they've had their accountant mm -hmm. do it, maybe it's in a shoebox, most likely it's in a drawer somewhere with sticky notes on top of it, maybe certificates that haven't really been processed. So when the records come in, there's a lot of cleanup involved. And even people that are pretty organized and understand this, you know, they may not have kept up to it, to it on a day-to-day -day basis because they have really important calls on dealing with their business issues. So with all good intentions, it's generally something that can get left behind or maybe not be as up-to-date as you'd like it to be. So because of the ability that people have now to raise more money privately and companies are staying private longer and maybe not trading um, as the Regulation A-plus companies do, what happens is companies are looking to outsource this function because they recognize that the, the standards that they're keeping might not be totally up to snuff. And as they grow and expand, they want to make sure that they have good, clean, accurate records because it's just a big help in a number of ways. And so companies like ours help people out in that situation because this is our core business. I mean, computer share was originally really a technology company. So we invest a lot of money in our technology infrastructure and in business continuity and disaster recovery standards and you know the ability to keep the data private and track and report on any kind of hacking or breaches that might occur. And we, we keep up with the latest and greatest because we keep the record books and records for an awful lot of companies. A great many of them are public. Um, and now an increasing number are private, but we keep it to the same standard. Um, and it's, it's a regulatory standard. Just because companies are raising capital privately under an exemption from the securities laws and they're not trading publicly, it doesn't mean that they're unregulated. It just means they're playing by a different set of rules. Okay. So there are still regulators looking over everyone's shoulders, especially ours, because computer share and V-Stock are regulated as registered transfer agents. So we're held to certain standards in terms of processing and capabilities. And that's an important piece of the puzzle for companies that are looking to keep their records in an accurate manner. Especially for um, really small businesses, as you mentioned, who may not, this may not be their wheelhouse, and they really are interested in using the new regulations and exemptions um, and to raise lots and lots of money. Um, speaking of which, Lisa, uh, Ilio, how much did they raise in that initial um, uh, equity crowdfunding uh, campaign? They, um, they raised $17 million in the initial crowdfunding campaign with 6,400 shareholders, that which is was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Um, and a really true success story. I mean, there's other things to consider, but a really true success story. You have a really small startup business, um, great product idea, um, and they needed the capital in order for them to get to the next stage. Um, but I'm sure, you know, you have a great CEO, but that's not their wheelhouse, understanding selling shares openly um, online. How did you help that small business? Did you help them initially in the beginning with the process of understanding how many shares to uh, make available, uh, share price, or was that some other some other resource that helped them, and then you came in after the fact? Tell me exactly 
um, how you help that business. Well, Sheer and I will will tag team on this. Um, Seth Farman is our chairman and a securities attorney, and Yoel Goldfeder is a is a securities attorney and our compliance officer and CEO. So we all we all worked in partnership with Elio and their team and Hambreft and everybody from the portals to the CEO and everyone in between to assist the company to guide them and we were, we got started from the very beginning yeah essentially what we did and where we added value is we helped the company set up the proper team and the proper channels right whereas you need a few components to make a successful raise one of them is social media that's huge in the crowdfunding space you really need a great story you need a great social media team you need a great portal that works well so there's all these kind of different pieces of the puzzle uh, whereas you know structuring the proper cap table like you mentioned and providing them with the insight of what to price the shares out out and so forth and I you know as we can't get so technical into this specific deal essentially we're there to hold their hands and help them and guide them with legal counsel with as she mentioned hand which was the underwriter uh, and they also went through the DPC eligibility process which is a big component especially if you're a private company you might not know what that is that's essentially getting your stock traded electronically um, I personally have done over 400 DTC eligibility applications so it, it's something that we knew very well going into here and and like you know as I mentioned before you know aside from as Joan mentioned, holding the cap table, dealing with the technology base, and holding the proper shareholder data, maybe making sure everything is accurate, especially dealing with thousands of shareholders, making sure that data is accurate, and essentially holding the company's hand, making sure everything was structured po properly before we went on to the, they went on to the OTC QX, and they weren't without some issues right I mean it was it was new there were there were some issues uh, you know which brokers will take these shares who won't take these shares thank God that's no longer an issue now but it was a great first run and you know they're they're off to a great start and we wish them the best and I also have to project here you know working with OTC markets was was incredible for everybody here and getting to know that team you know every single person that we've worked with um, as Joan could tell you how important it is to network work with everyone in this space because we all can learn from each other and, and this was certainly a very exciting process for, for us. You know, I remember when we met in DC, I told you that three years ago when this when the opportunity and even if when it was just a spark, the regulation was going to pass, it was something that we were very excited about. And when it finally did go live, it was something that everybody in this space took very seriously and as an opportunity that that now the average Joe can can get involved in investments whereas maybe before they couldn't they didn't have access they didn't have the know-how and now they have that capability I mean the internet is is something unbelievable for people to have access and social media as well absolutely <laughs> Talk about the Jobs Act and maybe point out three elements of the Jobs Act that a small business really needs to prepare for or understand before embarking upon this, this venture. Um, tell me a little bit about the Jobs Act and what people should really be paying attention to. Um, yes, so essentially you need a great auditors. Right, you need those uh, financials audited. You need great legal counsel, specifically securities counsel. Uh, it's very important to get someone that really knows what they're doing, and definitely an amazing transfer agent. Great por a portal, a social media story. Uh, you know, you have to be able to go out to the crowd and raise capital, and I think that's a really important element that I think maybe gets lost in a sense right you know everyone's really excited about this they get to go out there finally there's you know they're able to raise money now from non-accredited investors which is really exciting for these companies that really need the money and have a great story to tell but a big part of that is having the right portal having the right social media team to really get that out there and and to you know as far as which you know path to take you know, whether or not it's going to be a, a reggae or a title three 
crowdfunding, depending on what the what they what they need, how much money they need to right. raise, whether it's one million, whether or not it's going to be a tier one or, or tier, tier two. two. I mean, that's why it's so important when you get started to really have that good foundation of you know your network providers. Right, and as she mentioned, right, tier two and tier one and reg C, depends what your CF, apologies, it depends what you're looking to raise, right? Reg CF is the million dollar raise, tier two is r raising up to 50 million in 12 months, within 12 months, uh, title and reg A. And we are in reg tier, one. Well, tier one is is raising 20 million in within 12 months. So it depends obviously what your structure is and obviously with each tier come other regulations and other expenses. So it's good to know where your company's at, how much they're willing to spend to kind of get the money that they need. Um, and it's an important aspect to realize that each tier has their own regulations that you need to comply with. But but Thanks. also, Cynthia, just to just to interject one more um, time, and Joan certainly has more expen uh, experience as far as investment banking and having been in the private equity space and raising capital, but. I think it's so important, like anything else, and as a business owner yourself, Cynthia, you can you can attest to this, that understanding the regulations is so important to begin with, and understanding capability and what your goals are and which path to take. You need a lot of experienced people in the market to be able to do that, and know you know there's different expenses and you know there are plenty, there's so much information currently out there that's been provided based on these new regulations on what 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 do you think it's going to cost you to file that Reg A plus or what's the difference between one or the other. And you know, I think it's so important to be educated before you take that step because it's not a it's not a cure all for everything. You know, it's not magic. It's not something that's going to change, you know, the markets overnight simply because now we can go out and crowdfund. So. Very true. So Joan, tell me a little bit about you all's process for helping a, a business. Um, is there a step one, step two, step three to help the businesses that you all are helping in with equity crowdfunding? Um, I would say one of the things that we try and um, counsel people to do is, I mean, Lisa is absolutely right in saying that all the pieces are important. So it's very important for the issuer to be cognizant of exactly what their needs and goals are and find the right professionals to help them with that. Because there are a lot of options available for raising capital. The Jobs Act made some very sweeping changes. Back when I used to raise equity capital, um, it was sort of the country club set. You couldn't do any kind of general solicitation or public marketing. It was very, very restricted. And so you kind of had to find find investors in, in um, less public ways. And if you found someone that was an accredited investor, then you hoped they had other friends that were similarly situated and that, that you could you know, raise funds from a group of people that might be interested in something. But in terms of the issuer's goals, they need to be very clear about why they want the capital, what they're going to do with it, and what their best options are for raising it. For some people, the best option is still a Regulation D offering, whether it's a 506B or a 506C offering. C, I like to think of it as B is before crowdfunding and C is after crowdfunding. And so the rules are different, and 506C allows you to do general solicitation. Um, so that's still a very viable option for a lot of people. Regulation A, uh, Tier 1, is the smaller raise. Um, it's up to $5 million. So if you don't need a large amount of money, that might be um, a good option for you. There's lesser reporting restrictions. Um, but there are some other pros and cons to it. So it's really important that the issuer become educated on how what's available might best fit their goals. And that's where having a really well-qualified securities attorney comes in. I mean, I think both of us are you know, pretty cognizant of who is very well educated in this space. It's a bit of a specialty. Mm -hmm. And so um, I know, for instance, I'm working with a software firm um, that, oddly enough, came to me through uh, a friend that was at a barbecue and, <laughs> last summer and 
heard a gentleman that was complaining about having to educate his attorney and pay fairly high rates in order to educate his attorney about Regulation A+, plus because he's considering that as a means of raising capital to expand his software company. So the person that knew me and knew what I was doing said, oh, I have someone that you should talk to. And in the end, I gave him a list of about six different attorneys to discuss it with. And um, also said to him, you need to view your existing bylaws and articles of incorporation and make sure you pay attention in your offering documents to things that will make life easier for you and for your shareholders going forward. So pay attention to whether the attorney is including, including any boilerplate that requires physical certificates because you might not want that because in the long run it might be more expensive and less convenient for both you and your shareholders. But sometimes people don't realize things like that until it's too late. We've had a couple of private companies that have ended up, you know, either amending their bylaws and having to have shareholders vote on it at an annual meeting um, because that wasn't written in to begin with. So it is really important to get good professionals that will be aware of issues like this and be able to help you. So good auditors for your financials that are familiar with these types of capital raises, that will help you. Um, having an attorney that understands these rules and might be able to lay out the pros and cons of the different options for you. But in the end, it's up to the issuer to really become educated about who to hire to serve their needs and then also how to tell their story. As Sheer was mentioning, you know, having a good marketing plan for the internet world is really important these days because we're at a very interesting convergence of sweeping changes in regulations, great advances in technology, and a whole lot of shaking going on in the startup world. So it's a really exciting time, um, but it also means that people have to really choose their partners carefully and, and really educate themselves and be very aware of what their own needs are and what will serve them best. I think you brought up a wonderful point about education, as both of you know, and lots of people know, my mission is to deliver crowdfunding education on a personal level as well as now, <laughs> digitally. Um, however, um, with that education, I know that both of you all companies are really focused on education as well. Um, Joan, you all are, are looking at how you can make content and materials available um, to educate issuers as well as investors or shareholders um, to make it available, make it easy, um, so that they can be prepared. Um, why is that important to you? And let's, let's see if we can answer that in about 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think as, as Sheer and um, Lisa had pointed out, in that first Regulation A-plus offering for Elio Motors, I mean, people who bought shares might not have been as sophisticated because one of the things that happens in, in our current world is people have more access to deal flow and more information and more opportunity to participate in things like this, but they may not be very familiar with all the ins and outs of that. So it will help all of us. And I think that's why all three of our firms are very focused on education as a key component. It will help all of us if we make that type of information more publicly available and searchable and, and at the fingertips of people who want to invest in things like this. Because there are some great opportunities out there that none of us would have been able to find beforehand. So it's a good opportunity, but we don't want um, bad experiences to ruin that good opportunity. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, Lisa, you all have uh, a new portal that's specifically designed to help with education, if I understand correctly, right? It, it's it's a new website. It's um, crowdfundtransferagent.com. So it's specifically for this, and we'll be constantly updating it with new information as you know the information comes to us. Um, yeah, there are videos of successful raises on there and companies that have gone through the process, which we find we think will people find very beneficial, um, as well data and you know anything you can really get your hands on is on that website. A great thing to check out, crowdfundtransferagent.com. Uh, I think it'll be really beneficial to everyone. That's wonderful. How can people get in touch with each of you if they're interested in, in raising capital on a national level? Um, 
uh, Joan, how can people find you? What's your website and how can they connect with you? Our website website is pretty simple. It's computershare.com. Um, and if you do a search for computer share and private securities or private markets, we'll show up. Fantastic. Lisa, how can people connect with you all? Um, you can go to either crowdfundtransferagent.com or vstocktransfer.com. We're on LinkedIn. Um, it's just very simple, Lisa at vstocktransfer.com or Sheer at vstocktransfer.com. And uh, we're located in New York on Long Island, and we'd love to uh, assist in any way we can. Fantastic. I'm really super excited to have all of you on the, this very first episode today. Um, I think that this information is very valuable. I'm sure that uh, once it's archived, more people will um, take a look at it to learn from it, um, certainly because I believe that this space is going to grow astronomically and if there's anything that we can do to help them understand and make that process more smooth <laughs> for them, um, I'm truly grateful for it. So thank you all very much for being on this, this show. Thank you. How can they get in touch with you? Uh -huh. I'm about to make that announcement. Thanks for having us. <laughs> so hang, hang on while I close out here. So today's show was brought to you by Wells Fargo Bank in Comerica with fun and think crowdfund. You can always find us either on thinkcrowdfund.com, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram at thinkcrowdfund as well. If you have questions, you can post them online on Facebook at thinkcrowdfund or you're more than welcome to email us at starthelp at thinkcrowdfund.com. Again, that's starthelp at thinkcrowdfund.com. We have another show coming up on June 30th with Patricia Green from Babson College as well as she's the um, leader of the 10,000 Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Business Program and 10,000 Women Small Business Program as well. I'm excited to have her on the, the next episode, have more information to share with these upcoming um, webisodes um, that are coming, so please stay tuned. Or you can always watch us um, on YouTube on the archive show as well. Again, thank you all so much for being on the show and have a wonderful day. Thank you.